friends, is it worse to do evil voluntarily or involuntarily? Many of us, myself included, might be inclined to say that those who do evil voluntarily are obviously worse. But here comes Plato, the meme man himself, here to argue that really, it's quite the opposite. If you want to see how he reaches that conclusion and if he goes wrong, then stay tuned. Plato's dialogue Hippias Minor is often overlooked by many, probably because of its weird constellation sounding name. But it covers an important topic in ethics, and that is the issue of intent. Does it matter whether or not we're willing or unwilling to do evil? And if so, which is worse? Like all platonic dialogues, we got our characters. We got our boy Socrates back at it again, and he's facing off against this guy Hippias. Now Hippias, he's talking about Homer's The Iliad and The Odyssey. He claims that Achilles is better than Odysseus, because Achilles does evil things involuntarily, while Odysseus voluntarily does evil things. Obviously, he's wrong because the real best character of both works is my boy Diomedes, but that's just me. So Socrates challenges him on this because he believes doing evil voluntarily is better than doing evil involuntarily. He starts his attack by asking about running? Which of the two then is a better runner? He who runs slowly voluntarily, or he who runs slowly involuntarily? He who runs slowly voluntarily. The rationale here is that if you're running slow voluntarily, then that implies that you could run faster, therefore making you a better runner than the one who runs slowly, but is giving it all he's got. This is true of other sports to Socrates. In wrestling, someone failing voluntarily is a better wrestler than someone failing involuntarily because it implies that the voluntary guy could fight harder, because he has those skills. Now Socrates decides to make this beyond sports. When it comes to singing, who's the better singer? The one who involuntarily sings out of tune, or the singer who voluntarily sings out of tune? But let's get even more personal. Would you rather have one of your limbs not working voluntarily or involuntarily? For example, would you rather your leg go numb and you gotta hobble along, or would you rather voluntarily decide to hobble even if your leg's working fine? Socrates goes through all these different examples until he eventually reaches the overall issue of morality. And the good man is he who has the good soul, and the bad man is he who has the bad. Yes. Then the good man will voluntarily do wrong, and the bad man involuntarily. If the good man is he who has the good soul, which he certainly has, then Hippias. He who voluntarily does wrong and disgraceful things, if there be such a man, will be the good man? Alright, so I normally stay neutral in these videos and just present these ideas, but I'm going to question Plato here. But before that, I highly recommend you pause and take this time to try and think up your own rebuttals. Go ahead and comment below your refutations, and hey, we may even align. Firstly, I think a problem actually arises from Socrates' last quote that I showed. Socrates envisions this good man with a good soul, and if this man did a voluntarily evil thing, they would still be considered a good man. But Socrates himself wonders if such a man even exists, and that doubt is telling, because I think Socrates' entire conception of human beings is off. There aren't good people with good souls, or bad people with bad souls. Every individual is a bit of a mixed bag. Everyone has done some amount of good, and some amount of bad voluntarily. This isn't to say that everyone is equal. We differ in the amount of good and bad we do. But to say that we have either objectively good or bad souls that determine our actions is a bit simplistic in my opinion. Therefore, a good man with a good soul doing voluntarily evil is not better than a bad man with a bad soul doing involuntary evil, because fully good or bad souls don't exist. Secondly, the examples given by Socrates are focused upon the completion of some goal. The runner's goal is to finish the race quickly, the musician's goal is to sound good, but oftentimes evil opportunities require us not to go after something, but to avoid something. Don't cheat on your partner, for example. You're not running towards something, but rather running away from something. So let's see what happens when we look at an example that follows this. Is voluntarily cheating on your partner worse or better than involuntarily cheating on your partner? In this example, it's much more obvious to us that the voluntary cheating is worse. So the example Socrates used did not really address all of our possible moral dilemmas involving evil. Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, the term voluntary and involuntary aren't very well specified and can imply a lot. Throughout the dialogue, these terms are often used to describe something internal, like my evil soul is involuntarily making me do something, or my bad athletics is making me run the race slowly. 
but the reasons for something being involuntary are vast. For example, I remember hearing this true crime story of a guy who got kidnapped only to wake up and find a bomb locked onto his body. His kidnappers told him that if he didn't rob a bank, they would blow up the bomb. So the guy involuntarily attempted to rob a bank. I think we can agree that this guy is not as morally responsible for robbing the bank than your typical bank robber. Even if we think of internal involuntary factors such as mental illness, I think we all agree that someone who commits a crime as a result of mental illness is less morally culpable than one who doesn't. In fact, our US legal system reflects this. And finally, fourthly, a lot of the examples given by Socrates only focus on the effect and not the intent. Take the race example. Socrates' rationale is that the one who's voluntarily running slow is a better runner than the one who's involuntarily running slow, because this implies that runner number one can run faster. But why is runner number one voluntarily running slow then? This might be just me, but when it comes to sports or really any endeavor, I have a lot more respect for those who give it their all and maybe not get to the top than those who are lazy but naturally well gifted and get to the top. Back in the day, your boy was a top pitcher in Little League. I don't mean to brag. It was strikeout after strikeout after strikeout. But there were days when I just got lazy and didn't give it my all for whatever reason. And if there was another kid giving 100% but maybe not getting up to my level, looking back I respect that much more than my lazy ass. I guess this last point isn't really an argument but more of a personal preference of intent over effects at times. Cause you know about the road to hell and all that. But those are my four critiques of Socrates, aka Plato, aka Muscle Man here. Remember to share your own critiques below. Or maybe you agree with Plato and want to voice your support for him. Just know that you'd be voluntarily doing evil. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.